Hey guys, what's up? It's Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special guest with me. This is Kyle, my husband. Hello. And I wanted to bring him onto my channel so that I could get his perspective on me having bipolar disorder. I don't think that there's enough talk about how mental illness affects friends and families. So we're gonna talk about that today. Okay, so first of all, how did it make you feel when I had my manic episode? Like kind of walk me through. How that made you feel? Um, it was like a gradual increase of uh, anxiety, uh, helplessness, a lot of uncertainty. Didn't know where to turn, what to do, who to talk to, because you weren't a good source to talk to you about your mania. Yeah, and I wouldn't have listened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you were going through that time, what helped you get through it? Keeping routines that I normally enjoyed, trying to find some level of comfort in my life, even though our relationship uh, and your health was decreasing. So whether it was taking care of work and then like an outlet for me was at the gym or shooting basketball or golfing with some friends. So just trying to maintain some level of uh, consistency that I had but when everything was, was smooth sailing. So if you were going to give advice to someone out there that is watching this that has a friend or family member or spouse that has a mental illness that's having an episode of depression or mania, what would your advice be to them? It would be to talk to whoever it is that is struggling and uh, devise a game plan with them. There's no better person to tell you how to treat them than the person that needs help. You know, I. I thought you needed certain things and that didn't always work out very well. So uh, I would get the advice from the person who needs the help. Set a game plan, hold yourself to that, to that agreement and hold them to it as well. Like we struggled with that when I was manic, especially at first, he didn't know that I had a mental illness, I hadn't been diagnosed and so he just kind of thought that I was just behaving that way because I was just behaving that way at first. So. I thought you're just being a freaking asshole, honestly. If your friend, family member, or whoever it is, significant other, if you are aware and they are aware that they have a mental illness, uh, devise a game plan with them and something that they can agree to so that if trouble's on the horizon and they start to have some, some symptoms, then they are in agreement with something that you guys have already devised, you know, a plan that you guys have put together, and that would be a good starting point. What have you learned as far as like when you talk to me being calm and like not getting like mad or like aggressive with me, frustrated well, outwardly with me? Like, I can tell you what, that doesn't work. I can tell you what didn't work was uh, <laughs> telling you what to do or telling what I didn't think you should do. Any kind of that, any advice similar to those words would just push you away. People were either with your agenda or they were 100% against it. And I was usually 100% against it because they were not the healthiest decisions. I was being self-destructive for sure. Yeah, so that's that's a challenge. I mean, I think okay. it's human nature when you're doing something and people disagree with you or their approach of how they disagree with you if they're coming at you aggressively, you know, telling you you're fucking up your life, coming at you in some type of way that doesn't typically work. So there has to be different ways to approach someone. I know my friend Brian and I talked about in the last video that our feelings get kind of hurt when someone comes to us and is like, yo, I think you're being really manic right now. We like words like, you seem kind of up. Just talking to us like we're people, not like you're up here and we're down here because we have a mental illness. I don't like it when people talk to me in like a condescending way because that makes me not feel good and it makes me mad and then I rebel and then it's a disaster. <laughs> Yeah, try your best to stay calm, cool, and collective because if you jump up from here to here, then, uh, you know, it's going to follow <laughs> suit and they're going to beat you at that game. And that's the game <laughs> you don't want to play. So let them know that you come from a, a place of love, support, and concern. Um, maybe don't use the words concern because that usually didn't turn out very well. Um, but it's really just tiptoeing. It's just try your... Yeah, your, sadly your you kind of have to tiptoe. A little bit. You're walking on ice, you have a bad day, chalk it up as a day. If it's two or three days and you're still acting a little bit off or not quite yourself or you're feeling depressed, then now that is um, the ball is starting to roll and it's rolling in the direction that no one wants it to go. So 
have have a plan of action for if that happens. The person who's sick has agreed to, uh, and that their care, caretakers or loved ones are on board with too. So just seeing the early warning signs and really paying attention. Um, a day or two is nothing to be concerned about, but day three, day four, if things are still kind of out of place, conversations or just the house, I don't know, um, then that would be um, start to concern um, with where your, your health is going. The person who's sick and struggling needs to be communicating as well. Um, and that's, that's uh, on the caretaker's part too. I need to be asking you how you feel, what your thoughts are, and those sorts of things so I can have a good idea of where you're at. That's a really good point. That makes me feel really good when Kyle and my mom and other people ask me how I'm feeling because it gives me a safe platform to express that without feeling guilty or uncomfortable. Do you think it's important for people in general to educate themselves on mental illness? I would say yes, because before, for two and a half years ago, I didn't know anyone personally or not anyone that was really close to me. So I wasn't sure how to how to deal with it, who to contact, where to start, where to go. I was lost, confused, and I definitely made some mistakes, um, but I feel much more prepared moving forward. Not having a plan is a plan to fail, and uh, two and a half years ago, I didn't have a plan, and I failed, so. You didn't fail. We just had to go through a really hard time. Our marriage almost didn't last, but I'm super thankful that it did. Mm. <laughs> So on that note, what made you not give up on me and ditch me? Well, behind <laughs> closed doors, you're a sweetheart uh, and I've known you for nine years. So we had a, uh, you know, seven years of building a good relationship and me getting to know who you are and what you're about and your values. And uh, I signed up because I love you. And, you know, I'm going to cry. Marriage is not, uh, you know, love is, and it's not only a feeling, but it's a choice too. And I signed up for it and I chose to love you every day and I'm going to stick to it. I love him. Until He's I, the best. <laughs> until I almost did it. <laughs> you know, I know that on the outside looking in, people don't know what to think, but I'm just grateful for those that never judged us and supported our marriage this entire time and didn't encourage him to leave me. Shout out G Nitty 20. I mean, a lot yeah. of people definitely love us together and have seen us together for a long time. Those friends have gotten to know me for many years before all of this happened. So we had a good foundation. So they obviously knew that I was very sick and something was really off with me. So. Really off. <laughs> yeah, wait, I have, wait, what are you doing? I have to like end the video to like wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up, Kyle. Kyle hurt his finger at work, so <laughs> give a good thumbs up. <laughs> and subscribe to my channel. I think he can help a lot of people that are going through the same thing that he went through because I know that, you know, would you have watched a YouTube channel on this shit when you were going through it to get advice from someone like you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I provide a whole lot of content, but it would have been better than where I started. So, for sure. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that sucked. That was good. It's fucking real. It's raw. It's uncut.